What we're doing today is going over a new shielding gas for stainless steel. You see I got it written right here, new stainless steel MIG shielding gas or gas metal arc welding, right? So now typically what you run with stainless steel MIG is a, and I wrote old on here, 90% helium, 7.5% argon, 2.5% CO2. They call it trimix gas, right? Now, the problem with that is it's got helium in it. What are the problems with helium? Let's go down here. Helium problems. Number one, it costs a lot of money, all right? I believe it's like, I want to say like six times as expensive as like pure argon. So it's, it's much more expensive. Um, that being said, you can still get it if it's available, right? But it's got availability issues, right? Now, it's, uh, helium was originally, I believe, a byproduct of natural gas or, or something like that. And I remember when we were having trouble getting helium, they said, oh, they're gonna get into the reserve soon. Uh, and I told the gas supplier, there's a helium reserve, just like there is like for gasoline. He's like, oh yeah, there's, there's a shortage of helium. So this is where um, the, the need for a new stainless steel MIG shielding gas comes in. The shortage of helium, right? Also the cost. So if you can save some money and have it just be as, just as effective as the helium, then you would want to go that route, right? You'd want to switch it up and get a new gas. Um, the new gas that uh, they mixed up for me is 95% argon, 3% CO2, and 2% nitrogen, all right? So this gas being new, there's gonna cause some problems with welding procedures, right? So now when you certify a MIG weld at a company uh, using this, the old trimix here, the helium, that's what you have to use, right? So if you're gonna switch gases, the problem then becomes, you have to make sure that the gas is acceptable for your, your procedures, right? So what I'm doing today is I'm taking this brand new gas out there. There's very little written on it as of right now. I also had a company, I had heard this through a gas supplier of mine that this was coming down the road. And then I had a high-end company that I work with call me and say, you ever heard of this? So he, he mixed up a bottle for myself and that company they're doing like seven uh, tests. I'm just gonna do a standard bend test on it, see if it, um, see if it uh, cracks. So what we're gonna do is go out there, I think it's 3 16ths of an inch on the joint uh, with an eighth inch backing with a reopening of about 3 16ths of an inch as well. And we're gonna do like a three pass MIG weld on this and actually certify the procedure to make sure that this gas is an acceptable gas substitute for the tr old trimix that had helium in it, all right? So we're gonna get out there Fire this welder up and, and certify this process. Before we get out to the machine, I just want to do a quick little drawing on, on the mock-up of the joint we're doing. Uh, and you can see it's 3 16ths of an inch thick here. I forgot to mark this eighth of an inch, but that's eighth of an inch backing, 3 16ths of an inch root opening, two inch wide is the backing bar, and then you can see these are there, say three inches wide, three inches wide by eight inches long on these two pieces. And this is kind of a, a top view here. So what we're going to do now, go, we'll show you the actual joint, the real joint that we're about to weld, and then we'll get the parameters set up on the machine, and we'll start getting into this. So here's the plates we're getting ready to weld. We just got done fitting it up. We added filler metal on the edges right here and right here. Other than that, it's all autogenous tacks with a TIG welder. You can see I put some in the middle just to keep it from lifting up. I did that autogenously, and then... You can see on the back, I just fused it in autogenously, I don't know, every inch and a half-ish. So what we'll do now is we'll take a look at the shielding gas bottle, the cubic feet per hour we're going to run this at, then we'll get on the machine and show you the settings there. You can see here is the composition of the gases, 95% argon, 2% nitrogen, and 3% CO2. I've never welded with this uh, combination of gases, which is why we're doing this. Let's take a look at the uh, flow meter and see what we have for cubic feet per hour. All right, there's our flow meter. And if I click the trigger, you can see it bounces down to about, I don't know, 28-ish. We've got her set at 31, so you always want to make sure you get a working pressure by, um, well, with MIG pulling the trigger. If it was TIG, we'd be putting the foot pedal down, but we're right around 30 cubic feet per hour. What we're welding this with is a Miller, Millermatic 255. It's a fairly new machine. I have it in the auto set mode and it's set for stainless steel trimix, but that means it thinks it's 90% helium, 75% argon, 2.5% CO2. And we're not using that. We're doing the new mix with the nitrogen in it and no helium. And 
what we did is we did the auto set, we ran it, then we adjusted it up a little bit on the volts. So we had to go to 22.4 on the volts, all right? If it was set to the auto set, this white line would be right in the middle here. So what we did is we went to the top end of that and it ran really good. So we're running at 472 inches per minute um, on 22.4 volts. We have 030 diameter wire and it's set to material thickness. It always does that when you're talking, right? Anyways, the material thickness I set it at was eighth of an inch. Our backer is eighth of an inch. Our uh, actual plates are three sixteenths. So we're down a little bit, but after I put it at 22.4, it went right into spray transfer. So I think we're gonna be fine with these settings, but that's why we're doing the testing. So let's get into this thing and weld it up. All right, so what I got going on here is this is the root pass, and the camera gets a small window. The root pass went in really nice. I didn't have to do a lot of manipulations. I did do some circling. Um, throughout this entire weld, I did a, a lot of little circles. But these up-close um, views I'm going to do for all three passes. This is pass one, obviously the root pass. And I'll do the beginning, the middle, and then the end. And I did notice just by watching these videos that my post purge was a little bit lacking. So I should have had a little bit more post purge. I'm not sure what it was set at. I never checked it. But you can see right here as I extinguish the arc, you can see it shrinks up. We just got done with the root pass, it went in real nice, hopefully it looks good in the video, it always looks different in the video, so hopefully this is a good shot. So what we'll do now is we're going to let this get down to about 200 degrees, I might even wait till 150, and then we'll put another pass over here on this toe, and then we'll end it with one more pass on that toe, and then we'll get into destructive testing. All right, so here we go on pass number two. I'm doing little circles. And the whole time this thing was right on the edge of spray. It was going in and out of spray. Maybe I needed to turn down a little bit. I was trying to keep it in short circuit, but the root went in basically in spray, and I had the exact same settings. But you can see it here, it's, it's got a little bit more spatter. And it's a little bit more sh short circuit. So I just went across in little circles made sure I wet in that top edge of the weld so that there's no undercut leaving a little groove for that third and final pass and maybe we can see the lack of post purge better on this one the first one was okay but you guys see how it's shrinking up right there All right, pass number two went in real nice. We have a uh, good joint fusion, and you can see the toe of this well on the top edge has zero undercut. I don't see anything even close to having undercut. So we're gonna move on to our third pass, and it's got this nice little groove. Fill that baby in, and then we'll get into some destructive testing just as long as it passes a visual test. Enter pass number three. Get the arc struck and you can see little circles just to get that wetted out where I want it. And once you get it wetted out it kind of flows real nice on its own. Then with the start there, moving into the middle. You can see there's a little bit of spatter going on. But if you look at the plate when I'm when I'm done here, you'll see that the there's not as much spatter as it looks in this camera. This is just a really nice camera and it, it, it magnifies it, I, I feel like. So we'll get to the end here, and again, I think I should have had a little bit more post purge, but it doesn't matter because we're going to cut the ends off anyways before we do our testing. 
So. There it is, pass number three. Wrapping it up. Let's get to doing the bend test here, huh? All right, so we just finished our third pass. Went in pretty good. The only spot I don't like is right here. I didn't quite go over wide enough. But at the end of the day, what matters is, is it acceptable or not acceptable as far as a visual test goes? And it is acceptable. There's zero undercut. Everything looks good. It's not over an eighth of an inch convexity. It's filled into the full cross section of the plate. So what we're gonna do now is do the weld testing. We're gonna do two face bends, two root bends. I'm not gonna film myself doing the actual process of getting the backing bar off and getting the coupons set, but I will do videos updating where, how I'm doing it and where I'm at as I'm doing it. So onward and upward. All right, so step one, I took the runoff tabs off here. And what I'm gonna do now, I'll flip this over. As you can see, I got all them autogenous tacks. I'm gonna kinda just touch them barely with a grinder. And then I'm gonna trench this middle part here and try and pry those up. This side, then this side. All right, I'll keep you posted. Just so you can kind of see what I'm doing here, I just barely hit them tacks. I got two grooves going on each side of the root, and I'm just about to pry this baby off. So I'll finish up, I just wanted to show you kind of what I was doing. I'll pry this off, and then I'll show you the, show you the weld after I pried it off. All right, I got the vacuum bar off. As you can see, there's still a little strip of weld in the middle there. It worked pretty well. So we're gonna chase this now with a flap disc, get it all nice and smooth, make sure our grinding marks are going like this. So it's going with the bends. I'm gonna lay the two faces, two roots. Um, I'm, out, I'm gonna grind the face, the other side too. I'll show you that here real quick. I'm gonna grind that flush too now, and then we'll get into doing the bends. All right, so here we are. I just got done doing the face. Looks good. The root looks good. So we're going to do that. Cut it into inch and a half sections for two faces, two roots. We'll label those. And I will shoot a video of those after I cut them. So here we go. Here we are. That's never a fun process, but we got them ready to rock. You see two faces, two roots. We're going to go over to the bend tester. I got a new one now that I don't have to crank. So every time anyways let's go bend these and see if they pass So we just got done doing our bend test, and you can see they came out good, 100% acceptable. There's not even a crack of any kind in any of the faces or the roots. So what I'm going to do now is write up the welding procedures for this, because we just proved that the process is acceptable, and that the gas is also acceptable. And once I get that done, I will put them up on a big screen, so I'll put them in a PDF, scan them into a computer so we can put them up on a big screen, kind of review those, then we'll get out of here. All right, so here's a final look at the WPS that we just uh, wrote for this process. We did two face, two root bends, and a, PQ, and a PQR to prove that this uh, uh, process works. And I'll just real quick go over the bottom of the layer here. Gas metal arc welding, ER 308L, that's the filler metal. O 3 O is what we use, direct current electrode positive. I always put amps and wire feed speed in a range on a WPS so you can adjust them a little bit if you want. Same thing with the voltage the travel speed but I wrote down the actual numbers right here what we did just as a reference so it was 472 uh, inches per minute 22.4 volts and we actually were at 8 inches a minute for the travel speed so we use this new gas and you can see that's right here 95% argon CO2 is 3% and nitrogen is 2% so this new trimix gas we used it we proved that it works and uh, I don't know where we're gonna go from here but uh, I like it it uh, was a really good uh, gas, really good arc while we were using it. So that's all we got for today. Thanks for watching and subscribing to TV Weld. And if you wanted to 
copy of the WPS. I could email it to you and scan it or, or whatever you wanted. So we're out of here.